Defense. The hybrid joint public hearing of the Committee of National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification and Reconciliation with the Committees on Government Corporations and Public Enterprises, Public Order and Dangerous Drugs, Higher Technical and Vocational Education and Finance is now called to order. Allow me first to acknowledge the presence of the members of the committee who are with us today. Senator uh, Ramon Bonrevilla Jr. is uh, with us online and with the uh, presence of uh, Colleagues, I think uh, Senator Bongo, Senator Rafi Tulfo are on their way here. And I think Senator, also Senator Robin Padilla, Robin Hood Padilla is also with us uh, online. With the presence of our colleagues, we now declare the presence of a quorum. This is the third meeting of the uh, World Committee on National Defense. Today we have three major clusters of measures in the agenda. First, our bills amending Republic Act number 11709, aimed to further strengthen, strengthen professionalism and promote continuity of policies and modernization initiatives in the armed forces of the, Philipp the Philippines. This law is only nine months young, as it was only enacted last April 13, 2022, and took effect last July 1, 2022. It's implementing rules and regulations is also is only in place for only 82 days and our colleagues from the house of representatives approved on third and final reading a measure that would amend ra 11709 for nearly 118 days to this date it must also be noted that house bill 6517 was certified for immediate enactment by the president last december 9 2022 I sincerely hope that our resource persons will shed light on the urgency of the measure and the pressing need to amend the law this early. The committee takes cognizance of the passage of House Bill 6517 last December 12, 2022, and its transmittal to the Senate last December 14, 2022. However, the same is yet to be referred to this committee. Hence, it is still not in our jurisdiction and not included in today's agenda. The general public might, might wonder whether these efforts are in any way related to recent reports or talks of unrest and rumblings within the military. Sa loob ng mga ikling panahon ng pagpapatupad ng nasabing batas, ano po ang mga naging epekto nito sa moral sa hanay ng ating mga kawal at sa kabuang operasyon ng ating sandatahan lakas? Nasimula na ba ito ang mga inaasahan positibong pagbabago sa militar o nagdulot lamang ito ng unwelcome disruption? to the organization. I do hope that our guests will be forthright and straightforward with their answers so as to enlighten the committee and the Senate on the necessity to, to undo some provisions of a recently enacted legislation. Despite the seeming rush to pass, to pass this legislation, your committee, led by this representation, commits to thoroughly scrutinize the fine details and implications of these proposals. With the help of our resource persons and the esteemed members of this body and our dear colleagues, we shall ensure that this legislation will lead to the professionalization, effective operations, and fulfillment of the mandate of our armed forces. Also in our agenda, Senate Bill 1608, or an act providing free legal assistance to any officer or enlisted personnel of the armed forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police. Lastly, we will discuss measures proposing the establishment of the Philippine Air Force Academy filed by Senator Bong Revilla in this representation. The bill, the, these bills aim to create an educational institution for the instruction and preparation for military service of the Philippine Air Force cadets and provide the best education, training, and orientation in the aviation industry. The discussions will follow the order as they were mentioned. We will be happy to receive your valuable inputs and comments on these proposed bills so that we will come up with the best version of the measures, elevate the same to the plenary, and hopefully steer its passage at the soonest possible time. Before we proceed, uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo and Senator Bongo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, may we now request our... Uh, Committee Secretary, uh, to please acknowledge our resource persons and kindly indicate their respective offices for the record. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and a pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me acknowledge the presence of our resource persons for this afternoon's hearing. 
Uh, let us begin with the Department of National Defense. We are joined today by Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. And um, he is joined by um, Yusek Angelito de Leon, Yusek Ignacio Madriaga, Yusek Franco Nemesio Gacal, Asek Pablo Lorenzo, Asek Antonio Bautista, Asek Eric Florence D., Colonel Jacob Sadeus M. Obligado, and Colonel Nasser P. Lidasan. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, um, we are joined by Chief of Staff General Andres Centino. He is joined by Brigadier General Jose Maria Cuerpo II, Brigadier General Leonel Nicolas, Vice Admiral Ronald Anthony Reyes, Major General Alex Riliera, Brigadier General Fernando Reyes, Lieutenant General Romeo Saturnino Browner Jr., Rear Admiral Toribio Adasi Jr., Sergeant Major Rojalio Obilio, Colonel Medel Aguilar, Brigadier General Ahmad Omar Jr., Colonel Julius Agdepa, Brigadier General Romel Roldan, Colonel Cesar J. Conte Jr., Colonel Vicente Edgardo de Ocampo, and Colonel Maria Noel Talentino. From the Philippine Air Force, we have its Commanding General, uh, Major General Stephen Pareño, and um, together with him is Brigadier General Fabian Pedregosa. From the Philippine Air Force Aviation Cadet and Officer Candidate Alumni Association, we have Major General Ramon A. Ragasa, Major General Romeo De La Cruz, Major General Augusto Gaite, Colonel Restituto Pasqua, Captain Renani Loxon, and Captain Stuart Francis Guevara. From the Department of Budget and Management, joining us virtually, we have Ms. Mary Rose Aguilar, Ms. Jenilyn Suma, Attorney Carlos Borja Jr., Ms. Maricel Dizon, and Ms. Demi Moore Marquez. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Comsec. May we hear from uh, first uh, Senator Tulfo, uh, if you have any st uh, opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, Senator Dingo Estrada, and everyone here today. First of all, I fully support the effort of this committee in strengthening the institution of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and addressing the needs of its officers and enlisted personnel. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, as the protector of the people and the state, has the constitutional mandate to secure the sovereignty of the state and the integrity of the national territory. Hindi man natin naramdaman ang presensya ng hukbong sandatahan sa paro-aro na baha buhay. Sila pa rin ating inaasahan tumating ang araw na manganib ang seguridad ng ating bansa. Pero kung tutusin, wala nang magbabadya pang panganib sa ating seguridad. Ang armed forces at ang mga sundalo nito ang unang sumasaklolo, sumusuporta sa ating mga kabayan tuwing may sauna. Sila ang tumatawid sa baha, sumisisi sa dagat, umakit ng bundo. Kung ano-ano pa, iligtas sa mga biktima ng bagyo, lindol, kung ano pa, sa una. The service they generously and bravely rendered to us, in return, deserve our all-out support here in the Senate. And that is why I fully support the bills by my fellow senators, particularly those filed by our dear chair, Senator Jingo Estrada. Senate Bill 1601 and 1603, providing for the amendment to only 11709, which will further strengthen the professionalism among our soldiers and the officers and promote the continuity policies in the AFP. I also support Senate Bill 1608 because I see the value providing free legal assistance for armed forces because of the constant exposure to harassment cases given the nature of their work. There are groups 
that the Bakas allowing them to file cases left and right against our soldiers. That is why we need to support them not only in the field of battle, also in the course of legal battle. Indeed, military might is only as good as its, as its soldiers. Our dear soldiers, they are primarily driven by the love of our country and the Filipino people. It is important that we boost the morale of our armed forces and alleviate the sacrifices of their families, providing for them, looking after their welfare. Ito na lang, bilang consuelo. Maramdaman mula sa atin na pinagpapahalagaan po natin sila sa kanilang pag-ihira. I will be filing a combat paid duty bill that will show appreciation for our armed forces who engage in combat and actually risk their lives in combat to secure our sovereignty and protect our people. Ito po ay maliit na bagay kumpara sa ginagawa po ng ating mga sundalo. Kaya po ako'y sumasaludo sa ating mga sundalo sa AFP. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator uh, Rafi Tulfo. Before uh, we proceed, I would like to acknowledge the presence of another colleague, Senator uh, Francis Tol Tolentino. Uh, Senator Bongo, you have, you have any opening statement? Sulat mo lang. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Dear colleagues and all the uniform personnel uh, and resource persons present today, good day to all of you. Mr. Chair, our forces is the life blood of our nation's defense and security. In order for our country to have a secure and stable armed forces, our legislative and moral support for them must never waver and shall be given to them at all times. We must uh, strive to keep up uh, with the potentials and recommendations from our military and uniform personnel and revisit policies that uh, they will uh, remain responsive to the needs of the military. As such, Mr. Chair, I support this hearing to discuss possible amendments to Republic Act Number 11709 or the law that uh, strengthens professionalism and promotes the continuity of policies in the armed forces of the Philippines. Maganda po ang layunin ng batas na ito upang masiguro ang continuity sa mga polisiya at uh, programa po ng uh, armed forces of the Philippines. Uh, ngunit uh, kagaya po ng uh, karamihan sa ating mga batas, meron talagang mga birth pains. Along the way, several issues came up uh, which may affect the morale of our uniform personnel. At alam natin na ang sitwasyon ngayon, tila sumisikip po at nakakaroon ng limited position dahil sa 3-year tour of duty ng key positions. Ang epekto nito ay maaaring pag-agawan ng position at nawawala na po ng oportunidad ang mga nasa baba at yung mga bata na umaangat. Mr. Chair, there are also apparent issues on the designation of key officers, uh, of officers to key positions even when officers have just a few months or days remaining prior to compulsory retirement. Kahit na five days or one day na lang po bago ang retirement, pwede ka pang ma-appoint sa position na may three-year term, lalo tuloy sumisikip sa mga position sa taas. Parang nagiging, uh, kung gano'n noon, sumisikip na pangat. Uh, Ano na lang yung mga bata na slated na po sana sa mga for promotion dahil uh, sa 3-year tour of duty of officers, hindi na sila makakakyat. How can we improve this, Mr. Chair? Ano maigsan ang uh, birth pains? Uh, gaano makatagal ang uh, birth pains na sinasabi? Ano na lang yung mga apektado ng birth pains? Paano mabibigyan ng oportunidad? Yung mga deserving na ma-promote. Ano ba natin na hindi at mapaplansa ng mabuti na ang the best and the brightest po ang uh, mapili natin dito. Ang pamot-pamot, mabigyan ang oportunidad, yung mga deserving talaga. I support the efforts of this committee to address these issues and further improve the system. Another matter, Mr. Chair, I just want to take this opportunity as well as to put on record my sponsorship uh, of the bill providing free legal assistance to our uniform personnel Ito po na i-file ko to na Senate Bill 422 Free Legal Assistance to any officer or enlisted personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the PNP. 
Ang ating kapulisan at ang ating sundalo ang laging nasa front line po sa kampanya ng pamalan, laban sa banta ng kriminal, lalo na po sa mga drug syndicates at mga terorista. Alam naman po natin kung gaano kabigat ang responsibilidad ng mga sundalo, pulis at iba pang uniform personnel. Minsan-minsan po sa nais lamang nilang gampala ng kanilang tungkulin, sila pa ang iniipit na nakakasuhan. So, hindi ko na lang po, konti. Ito sa panahon po, may dating uh, rulong na uh, perte. Uh, meron po nagkakaso ng mga polis na ginampalan na po nila ang kanilang trabaho. Unfortunately, uh, wrong target po, no? Uh, at ayaw naman nila na uh, malimoral yung polis na ginagawa lang po ang kanilang uh, baho. Pumulungan po ni dating Pangulo, legally, para uh, hindi po uh, bawalan ng gana yung mga polis na magtrabaho lalong lalo na po sa ganong sitwasyon dahil walang magdedepensa po sa kanila so full support po kami dyan nasa sa mga sundalo at polis in line of duty kailangan natin silang suportahan para hindi sila matakot na gampala ng kanilang tungkulin siguro din po natin na may pondo ang polis at sundalo para mabigyan sila ng adequate na legal defense at uh, Mr. Chair nabanggit na rin po yan before Uh, I think meron rin po yata ang pondo ang answers for uh, sa mga legal uh, uh, may nagkakasas ang mga sundalo. Alam po, mas magandang may sa batas po natin ito. Alam naman natin na kulang po ang sreldo nila para dyan. Napakarami pong fees na binabayaran pag nag-hire ng abogado. Kung minsan, dragging ang legal battle na tumakabot po ng ilang taon. It is for this reason that I have filed a measure that will provide free legal assistance to all uniformed personnel giving them necessary support when they face charges from incidents related to their official duties. Ulitin ko po, basta in line of uh, duty, full support po kami. Our uniform personnel are risking their lives every day. They deserve to be treated with quality and strong support from the government. That is all, Mr. Chair. Again, thank you for prioritizing these measures. I give my full support to this committee in its effort to improve policies, policies which affect our uh, Uh, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Bongo. Before that, I would like to acknowledge the presence online of uh, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Senator Bong Revilla, it's your turn. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good afternoon, uh, everyone present today in this uh, very important hearing. Uh, salamat sa aking uh, best friend, uh, ang ating chairperson, Senator Jingo Estrada. sa garang uh, pagpapatawag ng uh, pagdinig na ito. I know that there is no more need to emphasize that a strong national defense is indispensable in a uh, peaceful, stable, and successful nation. Strength is found in unity. Hindi na natin kailangan pang i-memorize ito. Alam, na, alam naman natin ito, the importance of this hearing is that It is our attempt to continuously work hard, hand in hand, with our law enforcement authorities and uniform personnel. Kaya naman, salamat sa inyong lahat for your presence today's in today's hearing. Salamat din sa ating chairperson for taking into consideration two of my proposed bills in today's hearing. Uh, as of my uh, mentors, uh, President Fidel Valdez Ramos. As aptly said, the armed forces have a strong, uh, have a critical nation-building function. Katuwang natin ang isang matatag na sandatahang lakas para patuloy na tanuran at depensahan ng ating bansa tungo sa mapayapa at ligtas na bukas. In making them stronger, we fortify our nation's strongholds. And we ensure harmony and balance within our walls. I look forward to a very fruitful discussion with all of you. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Cosa. Uh, Senator uh, Robin Padilla, do you have any opening statement? Magandang uh, hapon po sa inyong lahat. Assalamualaikum. Pagpupugay po sa tagapagtanggol ng masa, Senator Jingoy Estrada, uh, sa mga kasama po natin sa Senado, 
Senator Bongo, Senator Bongo Senator Rastulpo, at sa buong lupon po ng Senado, at sa ating pong mga bayaning sundalo, isang magandang hapon po sa inyo. Uh, maikli lang po ang aking paunang salita sapagkat mahirap na pong pantayan ng napakagandang talumpati ng ating mga kasama. Ang uh, gusto ko lamang pong uh, parating sa lahat. Ano? Ating pong kasundaluhan ay ito po ang uh, kaluluwa ng ating kalayaan. Kung wala po sila, kailan eh, man giging malaya. At uh, sila po ang uh, puso ng ating bandila. Kaya ano man po ang mga panukala na ito, ako po ay uh, uh, sumusuporta. Katunayan, eh, nung ako po ay uh, nasa strategic communication po ng uh, Philippine Army, nasaksihan ko na rin po ang ginagawa po ng Philippine Army no? doon po sa kanilang Army Transformation Roadmap. Yung pagpapopresyonalize po ng ating mga kasundaluhan na na saksihan ko po yan. At napakaganda po na ito po ay maging batas na at uh, maisagawa po ng bu buong sandatahang lakas. Maraming salamat po, uh, ginoong tagapangulo. Mabuhay po. Maraming salamat, uh, Senator Padilla. Senator Francis uh, Tolentino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, nothing uh, long, Mr. Chairman. Just, uh, just a reminder to all of us, especially all those in uniform, that because of this hearing initiated by the good chairman, what we, are, what we will be experiencing is a reminder that the law is not etched in stone. It is evolving. It is in a state of process that should meet the demands and needs of the current period. And this is what this hearing is all about. As long as we abide by the parameters of Article 16, Section 5 of the Constitution, we are in good hands. I am Mr. Chair, I, I have no uh, further introductory statement. I support your initiative as long as it will be for the good of the armed forces of the Philippines and our country at large. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator Francis Toledino. Before that, uh... I would like to personally congratulate uh, General Centino for being reappointed to his uh, former position. Uh, congratulations. And also to Secretary uh, Carlito Galvez for being appointed uh, as uh, the Secretary of uh, National Defense. Secretary Galvez, I heard you have some presentation to make. Please proceed. To the honorable members of the Senate Committee on the National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation headed by uh, Senator Gingoy Ercito Estrada. Magandang uh, hapon po. Good afternoon to all. Foremost, please allow me to extend my, our utmost gratitude to the Honorable Senators for granting us a total of 45 billion pesos for our modernization, 27.5 billion pesos in program appropriation and 117.5 billion pesos in an program appropriation for the AP modernization program which is 6 billion pesos higher than the previous, previous, previous years of budget. Rest assured, Mr. Chairman, your honors, that we will prudently utilize the funds allocated in us in projects which will most benefit our people and protect our nation from various peace and security threats. I would like also to express my profoundest appreciation to Senator Jingoy Estrada, the chairperson of this honorable committee, for granting us the opportunity to convey our recommendations which coming from the, the field and our uh, key commanders on how best we can address the gaps and issues brought about by the implementation of RA 11709. While we lauded the 18th Congress for the passage of RA 11709, the unintended consequences are far-reaching and cannot be ignored. They have caused uneasiness and demotivation within the ranks of the armed forces of the Philippines, and if not addressed effectively, will also cause unnecessary attrition and bottlenecks in promotions, not to mention the unwanted long-term impact to the morale of our troops and also the stagnation of the armed forces of the Philippines. Being the protector of the Filip Filipino people and the Philippines, the armed forces of the Philippines needs to be dynamic 
and highly responsive to the fast changing and evolving local, regional, global security landscape. Threats to national security will continue and to have a, a personal competent and credible armed forces is the demand of the times. Your honors, the men and women of the armed forces of the Philippines are fully committed to their oath. Our soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines, including our, our civilian employees, are always willing to be ready to defend our country and protect our people from the threats, foreign and domestic. As the newly appointed Defense Chief, it is my sacred duty to constantly look, look out for our troops' welfare, and one of them is to ensure a level playing field for career advancement is being taken care of, wherein continuity, stability, meritocracy, inclusiveness, and sense of fairness will be the highest uh, form of governance. Hence, with the utmost respect, we, the Defense Department, humbly seek your kind understanding and support to our proposed amendment to RA 11709. With the permission of the Honorable Chairperson of this committee, may I allow to turn over the floor to our Assistant Secretary for Legal and Legislative Affairs, Attorney Eric D., to present our recommendations on the proposed amendment. Your Honours. Thank you, Secretary Galvez. Sec D, you may proceed. Uh, good morning. I will allow to present the recommendations of the Department of National Defense and the Armed Forces of the Philippines on the proposed amendments of A11709. So, RA11709 introduced a list of 13 key officers with a fixed term of duty of at least three years and one key officer with a fixed term of duty of four years. Out of these 14 officers, 13 are th three star generals, one is a four star general. RA11709 also prohibited lateral movements from one key position to another for all these officers. By virtue of the instituted three-year fixed, three fixed term of duty, it can be inferred that at least two commissioned years will be neglected for every position. As a result, other classes were indiscriminately and unfairly deprived of the opportunity to compete for promotions given the fixed term of duty. Instead of being able to free the professionalism within the UFP, the law imposed additional restrictions on the matter of promotions, which could sooner or later be a cause for concern to the leadership. Next, next slide, please. So, our primary recommendation is to introduce the term maximum term of duty for purposes of accuracy and clarity instead of the fixed term of duty as used under RA 11709. Uh, the president, as the commanding in chief, exercises the discretion in the matter of appointments of key officers. Uh, he has the sole authority and prerogative to appoint these key officers who all serve under his pleasure. Uh, this is now our proposed amended list of key officers with a maximum tour of duty. Uh, given that there will now be two sets of categories for key officers. We suggest referring to key officers with a maximum term of duty as tenured key officers and simply key officers for those without. While the amended list is also reflected in the Senate was filed, we respectfully recommend a shorter maximum term of duty for the major service commanders instead of the three years in view of the reasons stated earlier. Uh, excuse me, ask the, uh, can you, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the logical explanation? Bakit two years ang maximum tour of duty ng commanding general ng Philippine Army, CG PAF, tsaka flag officer in command ng Philippine Navy? May know the rationale behind it? Why not three years? What, why did you reduce it to two years? Yeah, yes, Secretary. Sir Chairman, uh, on the strategic management point of view, uh, in, uh, uh, in ex explicitly fixing the terms of the commanding general, it will uh, basically contradicts with the code of ethics uh, provision, wherein uh, it says that in providing criteria, we should not arbitrarily discriminate a certain group. 
if you will have uh, the three years uh, uh, fixed term, Your Honours, uh, Mr. Chairman, you are materially disqualified already. Uh, those uh, who, who are also highly qualified, juniors, maybe the next class on the uh, third class, and even three years of the class will be greatly affected. By having two years, I believe it may be only some sort of uh, a minimal uh, distractions on the cycle of the promotions of the different classes. How many, how many will be affected kapag two years? How many classes will be affected? So ngayon, sir, nakikita natin, sir, medyo mayroong uh, counting restriction as compared to non-unrestricted. Ang maganda lang po kasi, sir, yung two years, the, si the service commanders place as a service commanders. More on procurement service or in, 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 ano, in providing moral and welfare to our troops, procuring modernization. It will take two years to correct a cycle. If you have only one year, if you will uh, uh, assume as a commanding general Philippine Army, the budget already set, and you cannot change anymore, or you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, infuse uh, some, uh, some changes during your tenure, if you will have only one year. And if you look at the, you know, the, the, you know, the, uh, the uh, governance feature, one of the governance features is stability and continuity. And uh, in, in having a two years uh, uh, maximum uh, uh, term of duty, we can you know, we can make uh, we can we can assure that the major services commanders can really instill some uh, changes and reformation in the major services. In fact, if you look at the history of the armed forces, we have 59 chief of staff, but the revolving door actually happens on CGPA. Commanding General Philippine Army, because more or less 50 of those uh, uh, who become chief of staff came from the Commanding General Philippine Army. And if you look at the tenure of the Commanding General Philippine Army, it is more a revolving door than the chief of staff. That's my answer, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Secretary Galvez. Please continue, Asek. Thank you, Your Honor. So, key officers, uh, the freestyle generals occupying these key positions now will be allowed lateral movement versus tenure key positions provided earlier, so long as they have at least one year remaining tenure in grade. This will afford a more experienced freestyle general the opportunity to assume a tenured position as opposed to under R117-09, where the pool from which uh, we will select a tenured key officer. To two star generals. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, we appointed the key positions, whether you tell me or not, officers shall have at least one year remaining to the uh, I think, I think, Your Honor, these recommendations are, refle are, are replicated in the Senate bills. The only difference is uh, maximum tour of the term, maximum tour of duty, Your Honor, and the uh, two year. The two years instead of the three, the major service commanders. Uh, further, avoid a bottleneck in promotions to the ranks of generals and flag officers. Uh, the idea of having a graduated compulsory retirement age was introduced. The age of 57, retirement age of 57 for brigadier generals or one star generals, uh, 58 for two star generals and 59 for lieutenant generals or upon reaching the three-year maximum tenure in grade. The three-year maximum tenure in grade is the period within which they can hold the rank. Yeah. For tenure key officers, these are officers, the AFP chief of staff, the commanding general of the army, the air force, and the flag officer in command of the navy, including the PLA superintendent. Uh, they are retired upon completion of their period of duty, regardless of age, or upon their relief from post. Uh, we respectfully recommend this honorable committee that the proposed amendments be made, these proposed amendments be made retroactively to apply to those promoted the 11709, for a retroactive application to foster stability there will also be no confusion as to which law applies to whom. 
Uh, otherwise, we will be bound by restrictions in the implementation of these amendments, and the effect of what we saw to do now will only be realized two or three years down the line, sir. Uh, and 709 also provided for a shorter tenure in grade for those officers promoted to the rank of criminal during, effect, during its effectivity, or that is on or after 1 July 2022. Uh, instead of the usual 10 years, RA11709 shorter, shortened the tenure in grades of colonels to 8 years. That means a colonel promoted under RA11709 has only 8 years within which to be promoted to the rank of general. Otherwise, uh, the officer will be deemed separated from service. Uh, when we propose a revision to the usual 10 years, the Senate bills adopted a nine-year tenure in grade for criminals, which we also deem as reasonable, to be honest. Going back again, please. Why 10 years and why seven, six years for the others? See, the seven, six, and six years, those are the maximum tenure in grades provided for under our E11709. Uh, there's no change to that, sir. So no need to amend it. No need to amend it. Colonel and Captain of the Philippine Navy, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, also effectively removed the prohibition that an officer should have at least one year in service to be eligible for promotion. As a consequence, colonels and major generals even if they are about to retire in a matter of days or weeks, qualified as candidates for promotion. To remedy the situation, we respectfully recommend the reintroduction of a similar prohibition where for an officer to be promoted to the rank of Navy General or higher, we have to have at least six months remaining tenure in view. The six months prior to this privacy, uh, an officer should have at least one year remaining tenure in grade or one year uh, from compulsory retirement in order to be promoted to the rank of uh, Brigadier General. Uh, this shortened prohibition uh, as in proportion to the shorter tenure in grades of criminals and Brigadier Generals under RA 11709. So we were honest. Sir, your honors, uh, Secretary, Mr. Chairman, can I, can I supplement? Please proceed. Because uh, as I uh, said by uh, Senator Bongo, that uh, there are also some, uh, some issues on some officers who've been promoted a few days or a few weeks uh, before his retirement. This will correct that, uh, your honor, that uh, the minimum uh, requirement is uh, only, you know. Is this part of your amendment? Uh, it's also part of the Senate bill, your honor. Senate bill. This, these provisions are, are already incorporated in the Senate this year. You want to? Uh, question lang po, uh, Asset and Secretary Galvez. Before, before po napasa yung, yung uh, uh, Senate, uh, itong Republic Act 11709, di ba uh, pag less than one year, hindi na pwede. So, nung naipasa ito, uh, Nagka problema po sa sa IRR, I heard, hindi naman. Sa law po. Sa law, sa law. Nagala po talaga. Sa Nagala talaga. Yes, so sir. pwede kahit na one month na lang. Yes, kahit sa one day na lang. Yes, sir. So pwede i-promote pa rin. Yes, Hindi na nawala. So ngayon, anong gusto ninyong i-ibalik or i-amend ulit na? na, na uh, nais po namin maibalik, Your Honor. So instead of, uh, so just to recap, sir, before na ipasa yung batas, one year, less than one year, bawal lang ma-promote. So nung na, napasa yung batas, kahit na one day or one week, pwede yung ma-promote. So ngayon, ang uh, proposal nila is uh, i-fix -i -i kung ito yung uh, tenure in grade. Instead of one year, magiging six months. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Then another question lang po, sir. 
yung sinabi niyo po kanina na bawal yung uh, uh, lateral, di ba? For example, three-star position, bawal ka lang, hindi ka lang ma ma-designate doon sa, for example, sa ISCOM, uh, ganun, sa three-star three position. Pero yung, how about the, yung two-star naman, na, let's say, uh, division commander na less than one month na lang siya. Sa, sa, sa batas ngayon, pwede siyang iangat to three star kahit less than one month na lang siya. Sa, sa, sa kasalukuyan, wala well, hindi pa na med yung batas. Uh, well, yung 31709 effectively removed the prohibition. So as is po, qualified candidates for promotion even if we have less than week so one week so we can say two star na one week na lang pwede pa siyang ma-promote to three star position kahit na one week na lang siya pero yung mga three star lateral na kahit na meron pa siyang uh, one year bawal siya bawal po so yun lang May plano kayo yung amend yun sa ngayon, sa bago? Yes, sir. Uh, um, uh, on the first uh, issue on the lateral, sir, uh, the B board, board of Generals has been restricted. Ang answer namin kasi, sir, uh, the principles of governance, we have uh, two main principles of governance, which is uh, basically all three. Uh, power to govern, sense of fairness, and accountability. Uh, having the, you know, the provisions of uh, the uh, uh, provision of the lateral, no, lateral, lateral, uh, restricting the lateral uh, assignment or uh, designation of uh, lieutenant generals to any positions once they are being, being designated. Uh, we It violates you know, the placing the pers best person on the best place and the best time. For example, we recite an example. Uh, we have a designated IG who had been uh, in the Western Western Front. And because of that he has, you know, he has been promoted ahead, uh, he was not. Uh, he was forbidden to, you know, to be, uh, to be, you know, to be assigned to West, Western Mina where he is best suited. So yun sa lang nakita namin. And also at the same time, uh, yung mga na 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 bigyan na ng position, for example, in some cases that uh, in the need of time, we we need to rotate some you know, some officers. For example, there there are there are instances that uh, uh, two or you know, two area commands have been switched because uh, one of the area commander has been assigned there for all, all his life. At the same time, the others also have the same thing. So we have to rotate so that we can uh, fit in with the requirement of the uh, the services and also the requirement of the, the time. In this case, sir, if you have uh, already uh, uh, assigned or uh, assigned an officer and has been given lieutenant general, even though he has uh, two years or even uh, as much as uh, three years as given by uh, the term uh, by promoting uh, the lieutenant general, he cannot be, he cannot, he cannot be, you know, and it, it, it tied up the Board of Generals of doing its job, of really uh, placing the right people on the right job at the right place and the right time. Ito namang uh, sa amended na uh, bill, sir, the same pa rin, walang babaguhin. Uh, walang, walang minimum na near in grade sa... Pero siya, from two star to, to three star, walang minimum pa rin. Six months po. Six months. Uh, two star, eh, sabi mo, from uh, Brigadier General, how about from two star to three star, isang, minimum? Isang taon po. Isang taon po. Pag less than one year na, hindi na pwede. Yes, sir. Ito, ito, ano, sir, yun, sir, yun, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Senator, uh, ito no, ito replicates yung ano po sir, yung uh, parang uh, ginagawa natin sa mga medyo services. Because this is a key position. Kung maglalagay po tayo ng less than ano, less than ano, you cannot, ano, you cannot uh, uh, execute the campaign in less so, than one. So tatanggalin na po sir yung, uh, yung mga one week na lang na one month na. Point. Yes sir, this so, is. Kailangan a... one year. Yes. yes. For, one year. For the key position. For key position. So that it will not be subject to abuse, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yan. Uh, as like before the advent of uh, Republic Act 11709, wala ito no one year no. One, one year. year no? Yes po. What is the logical explanation? Bakit ni reduce to six months? Bakit hindi natin ibalik yung one ah. year? Uh, we have under 11709. 
So instead of having uh, one year, as we were saying, we're having one year in prohibition, Your Honor. What's going to happen is we uh, only have two years within which to be promoted to the next rank. Mm-hmm. Right? So the nice thing about this is, going lang po six months, para po meron silang two years and six months within which to be promoted. All right. Okay. Yes, Secretary. Mr. Chairman, also uh, if you look at you know the the you know the recruitment process. Ang atin pong recruitment ano, recruitment age is uh, 17 to 21 for uh, PMA and also uh, 17 to 30 35 sa sa sa, ano, sa ating uh, OCS at saka yung sa Integri. And if you look at you know may mga mag- magagaling po na mga ano mga officers tayo na talagang uh, gen- general qualified yung tinatawag nating ano star star rank qualified na mga matatanda but they were discriminated because pumasok sila sa services na matanda na. And considering that uh, ano natin, prohibition natin is one year, it uh, really discriminate or automatically disqualified those who ano, who who, ano, who entered uh, the service with a uh, with, ano, with a certain age na nakikita po natin na pwede po po silang maging general. And sometimes nakikita po namin na yung ibang mga colonel na nakita namin na they are very very much qualified because of age. Uh, they were no, they were no, they were uh, uh, retired uh, without the benefit of uh, having uh, served more to the service. So na deprive yung ano yung uh, tao, na deprive din yung organization to have a more qualified option. Asik, please continue. Next slide, please. Uh, so the so the honest. This is the major concern po ng implementation natin ng RE11709. Uh, the inclusion of state personnel from the average of RE11709. Prior to the enactment of RE11709, the promotion, separation, and maximum allowable tenure in grade of our enlisted personnel were governed by the respective issuances of the UFP, the Philippine Army, the Philippine Air Force, and the Philippine Navy. We strongly recommend reversion to the old system matters concerning our enlisted personnel governed by the issuances of the UFP and the respective service branches. This is due to the developing and expanding needs of the service branches in the AFP. Part of the second ambition was reflected in the Senate bills, but the authority to determine uh, was granted to the Secretary of National Defense, Your Honor. So we respectfully request this honor the committee to adopt this exact provision, Your Honor. So the Secretary of National Defense will be able to delegate to the AFP and the major service the matter of during uh, the matter of uh, promotions, separations, the maximum allowable tenure for our enlisted personnel. Last is last among our recommendations is the amend the amended episode distribution of the generals and flag officers. Uh, RA 1709 mandated that generals, flag officers of the UFP be limited to 1% of the authorized total officer strength, 0.1% of the authorized total troop strength, whichever is lower. By uh, implementing this provision, among the European, the UFP of the UFP is the UFP of the UFP. From the old number of 190, which was one year from the approval of 
everyone wants of it or they the defense establishment we respectfully submit that this drastic division does not afford the, the flexibility needed this time and age. Uh, actually, your honors, your recommendation naman po namin ay i-adopt na po ng mga Senate bills. Uh, this constitutes uh, all the recommendations of the BNB and the AFP as to the proposed amendments of our A1709. Uh, with the permission of the Honorable Chairman, may I be allowed to respectfully turn over the floor to the Secretary of National Defense. Thank you, uh, Asikdi, for your presentation. Uh, Secretary, of have... Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I will also add, sir, that uh, if you will uh, have the percentage uh, percentage formula, it will uh, arbitrarily discriminate the Philippine Air Force and the Philippine mm -hmm. Navy. Because uh, they are... They're, you know, they're, uh, Integration is more on equipment heavy, meaning the responsibility of you know doesn't mean that uh, they have only uh, 100 people. Uh, they are not qualified to have generals, unlike for you know for you know that uh, you you need uh, some thousands of uh, people before you you become qualified for general. Because if you look at you know the configurations of our armed forces, we are we are you know we are uh, we are uh, abided by the mission and the mandate, and the mandate of the air force and the navy on maritime domain defense and also the airspace is very much important as the army if you will you know we will uh, 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 we will use the formula of percentage there is some sort of violation of the law on uh, 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 arbitrarily discriminating one group from the other so with this uh, we are recommending that it will be based on uh, the uh, table of organization and equipment which is being done uh, judicially by the major service commanders and uh, your honors the passage of these proposed amendments will put the so-called grumblings to rest and assert a level of uh, improved morale within the ranks be assured that each of us in the defense department and also the armed forces aspires and strive harder to give the Filipino Filipino people a professional armed forces that is highly responsive to a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous regional and global security environment. The proposed amendments will immensely help us to ensure the development of credible Philippine military that is a source of our national pride. Dear Honorable Senators, Chair Mr. Chairman, with your strong support, we are hopeful in realizing the vision of making the Philippines a strategic player in the Asia-Pacific region by 2028. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Secretary. Can we uh, request for the submission of these uh, documents uh, before this committee? Yung, uh, yes. Uh, table of organization. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Right. We will, we will Thank do you. that. Uh, before that, I would like uh, to recognize the presence of uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa, who is uh, present online. Uh, Senator uh, de la Rosa, do you have any opening statement? Uh, I have no opening statement, Mr. Chairman. Um... I will just uh, make right. questions later. Okay, thank you, Senator De La Rosa. Okay, Senator Rafi Tulfo. Yeah. Okay, you have the floor. You have to. If you want to ask questions. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to discuss uh, matters uh, pertaining to the promotions and fixed terms of the uh, uh, colonels and generals, but uh, we uh, focus my. Uh, discussions more on the um, boosting the morale the uh, soldiers to lens in sa aking uh, statement earlier a military might is as good as its soldiers um soldiers with high morale they are the fiercest uh, warrior in the battlefield uh, and how do we boost the morale for soldiers. Ito po yung dapat ang um, bibigyan natin pansin sa kanila yung pagkaalaga not only for them but for their family. Kasi if the soldiers know that they are being take, well taken care of and if the unexpected happens their family will be taken care of then pwede silang lumaban kahit paano pa mangyari sa field. Now my question notice Mr. Chair uh, dito po sa 
sea duty pay, flying duty pay, at combat pay. Bukang hindi ata parehas. Uh, maybe you know, the DND or the AFP can address this. Halimbawa po sa Air Force, pag sila po ay mayroong flying duty pay, 50% of their base pay ang bayad sa kanila. Tama, nasa aeroplano sila, sa may kalaban dyan, bobombahin nila, bomba. Patay na yung mga kalaban. At ang uh, Navy naman, sea duty pay, 25% ng base pay. Habang nagkakape sila, pwedeng magpabomba doon sa Abu Sayyaf, sa kalaban. Okay sila. Now, itong mga taga-Philippine Army at uh, Philippine Marines na foot soldier, magigipagharap harapang bakbakan na yung kaliwang pa ay nasa hukay na makipagbakbakan sa kalaban, ang kanilang combat pay, 300 pesos a day. At meron pang limit yan hanggang 10 days lang. So kung nakipagbakbakan sila tulad nangyari sa Marawi, 20 days, eh sorry na lang, libre ng isang pang araw. Bonus mo lang sa gobyerno, isang pang araw may bayad. Kaya ba meron silang 3,000 na agad per month. Okay, pag nag they go to combat, pero yung 300 pesos per day for me, Mr. Chair, napaka-late ata noon, hindi ata pata siyang kumpare sa kanyang mga uh, kapatid sa uh, different uh, branch of service. Uh, baka, naman, baka naman pwede natin madagdagan to itong 300 at pwede siguro na-extend na uh, habang siya nasa field, Kung siya isang buwan na sa pili ng ipagbakbakan, dapat isang buwan pumapatak yung metro ng kanyang combat pay. Isa pa, eh baka naman po magbigay tayo ng scholarship doon sa mga fallen heroes natin. Kasi I've seen a, uh, an ad sa isang uh, cinema a uh, few months ago na yung isang foundation naghihingi ng tulong uh, kung tani naman para tulungan yung mga fallen heroes. Sabi ko, wala bang budget ang AFP? Bakit mangingi? Dapat yun, it should be the AFP. The government should take care of our fallen heroes. So, para sa akin, dapat lahat ng anak ng sundalo na namatay, eh, dapat free scholarship. Ganda siyempre sa ating PNP. So, para naman, eh, mabusa ang moral ng ating mga kasundaluhan. Now, again, maybe General Sentino or Secretary Galvez can answer the question, bakit po hindi patas? Mas, mas mataas po ang ligad niyo sa Air Force, sa Navy, sa Army and Marines, ang third class citizen. Hindi, joke lang, pero ano kaya? Ba't ho kaya gano'n? Hindi ho. Kaya saan ngayon? Yes, sir. Yes po. Um, to Senator Estrada, the chairperson of the committee, uh, Senator Go, Senator uh, Tulfo, Senator Tolentino, Senator uh, Tilarosa, Senator Revilla, and Senator Padilla, our uh, Secretary of National Defense, senior officials of GND, fellow officers from the Armed Forces. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, first of all, sir, uh, we, in behalf of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Senate and uh, the committee in particular for accommodating us and uh, shedding light, uh, allowing us to shed light on the proposed amendments to the law. Uh, going to the question of Senator Tulfo, sir, uh, wala po kaming, uh, gusto namin, we treat all our soldiers uh, equally. Uh, itong mga uh, na-mention mo about the combat pay, uh, sea duty pay, uh, flying pay, these are what we call collateral entitlements. Um, maybe uh, just a bit of history. Nung una po kasi sir, nagkaroon ng uh, uh, collater collateral entitlements. Um, some of the collateral entitlements were pegged on the percentage of the base pay. The others were based on a fixed amount. So habang nag increase po yung sweldo, yung naka-peg for the percentage, lumaki na lumaki. That's why the, the, uh, since the flying pay, the CGT pay, were based on percentage of the base pay, lumaki ito, lumaki din siya. But yung fixed number ng, let's say, the combat pay, stayed on to the fixed amount of 300 pesos. Kaya we welcome very much sir, your, uh, the initiative of the good senator that uh, magkaroon po tayo ng initiative to perhaps rectify these uh, um, entitlements so that uh, mabigyan po natin ng, I know that uh, the, the, the bigger part of the armed forces is the ground forces. Uh, they're spread all over. We also have the Marines uh, deployed in the wide expanse of the West Philippine Sea. Also of the Philippine Armed Personnel na nandun po sa mga kamundukan ng Mindanao in Northern Luzon. Uh, they share the, equally the hazard and the risk. 
this is the same as we have with the uh, armed force, I mean, the Philippine Air Force and the Philippine Navy. So I think, sir, uh, the, the initiative of the good senator is a very welcome uh, move, for, and we will be uh, um, grateful if uh, this uh, initiative will be passed into our law, sir. Thank you, sir. And I may add also, uh, uh, General Centino, the scholarship club, ano po meron ng ating AOP? Uh, para doon sa mga sundalo, uh, may nangyari sa kanila sa field. In short, kapag sila po ay nag ng kanilang buhay. Uh, ano po yung mga scholarship program meron sa kanilang mga naulilang anak? First of all, sir, we have the Republic Act uh, 6963. This is a law that provides uh, benefits for uh, the uh, dependents. Uh, ang tawag dependents, yung mga anak, yung... Uh, mga asawa, ng mga sundalo natin killed in action or even those wounded in action. Meron pong batas ito, sir. Uh, and uh, the government is providing funds um, uh, to pay for uh, the educational requirements of uh, these dependents. Um, in the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have what we call the Educational Benefit Systems Office. This is an office this caters to the management of the, that uh, funds. So, so up to how many children po? Halimbawa, lima po ang anak ng isang sundalo na namatay. Ilan po doon sa lima? Good. All of them come sa graduate. Basta killed in action, wounded in action, in line of duty. Then very good. So wala tayong problema tungkol dyan. And uh, as of now, sir, we have uh, a total of 3,520 grantees of this uh, benefit. Okay. How about yung pension po nila? Magkano po matatanggap nila na uh, pension? 